Hey gang, so we've been talking about how to secure a wireless router and encryption and SSID and all this other stuff. So instead of just talking about it, let's actually see it in action. So in this quick little lecture, we're going to talk about securing our wireless router while still making sure that all of the wireless devices on our network can still connect to our network. So this first picture, this first section is after we actually log into the router. So we put in our username and our password, then bam, the admin portion pops up. As you can see, the router has a private IP address because the router is inside our LAN. Although it allows us to get outside our network, it has to have a private IP address. And then if we go down to this section, we actually see that the DHCP server is enabled. As we remember from our 901 lecture and in the 902 lectures is that DHCP is what actually assigns IP addresses to our devices automatically. All right, so it makes our life a lot easier. If it's not enabled, then you have to manually assign IP addresses to your devices. Most people don't know how to do that, especially like everyday people and even people that do know how to do it, it's gonna make it a lot more difficult um, for you and for your guests. So just make sure that you got DHCPC, especially on a home uh, network, make sure that you have DHCP enabled so all the devices can automatically get an IP address. Next thing I wanna look at is our network name. So you remember that the SSID is the name of the network. So FBI surveillance van, uh, Starbucks Wi-Fi, those are the SSID. So you wanna change that to, um, let's keep it simple, master IT. Lame, but that's okay. I couldn't think of anything else. So um, if you have interference, another thing you can do is actually change the channel. All right, some devices, if they're on the same channel, they actually interfere with each other. So you can change it. Maybe if it's on channel one, you change it to channel six. If it's on channel six, you can try channel 11. And you can just kind of go through that until you figure out what's actually causing interference. Uh, we have the SSID broadcast enabled. That means that it's actually displaying the network name. If you have a wireless device that's capable of connecting to a wireless access point, then it's actually gonna display that um, name, all right? So to make this network a little bit more secure, we're gonna actually disable that network name. So when people pop up and see available access points, Master IT won't pop up. But if they know that the name of my network is Master IT, they can still manually connect to the network, okay? So that's the first step in security. Next thing, let's go underneath the wireless security tab. So this network is terrible right now. It has no security at all. It's not, it doesn't have any encryption. So all you gotta do, if you um, know the name of the network, type in master IT, bam, you'll, be, you'll have um, access to the network. So these are the options for security modes. If I'm at the house, what's the best option for me to use? Perfect, WPA2, but should I use personal or should I use enterprise? Easy, so if I'm at the house, I would use personal. If I was in a big organization, I would use enterprise. And if I was using enterprise, I need something called a radius server to actually authenticate. So WPA2, passphrase is gonna be, of course that wouldn't be the real passphrase, but um, we're just gonna keep it as that for now. Um, wireless Mac filtering. This is another step that we can take for security and we actually add all the Mac addresses to all the devices that we have on the actual network. And if a device tries to connect to our network that isn't in this Mac list, it won't be able to connect. All right, and just remember that the Mac address is just the physical address of all our um, devices. Um, what's the next thing we wanna look at? Let's go underneath. Now, nah, let's go underneath access restrictions. So, if you have kids or you have grown ups that act like kids, you can actually restrict what they can do and what they cannot do, what times they can do stuff and what times they can't do stuff. So, you can have them. Um, Actually, it's allowed it. You can have them um, do certain stuff and they can't do certain stuff. So you can set up that they can go to certain websites or they can't go to certain websites. You can block uh, Facebook or World Star Hip Hop or, you know, stuff that you don't want them to go to, right? Um, or you can just 
um, actually block keywords. So if they put in you know certain words inside the browser, they won't be able to actually access those websites. Um, one thing that you don't want to do, you would never want to block port 80. All right, if you block port 80, if we put this over there, nothing's going to work because remember, all internet communication runs off of port 80. Or if we blocked POP3, IMAP, or SMTP, all three of those ports actually deal with email. So if you block any of those ports, then you won't be able to receive email. If you block DNS, then it's going to really uh, mess up your internet experience because DNS is what actually resolves website names to IP addresses. So if you actually block DNS, you actually have to know the IP address of a website as opposed to the name of the website. Uh, last but not least, here we can actually enable port forwarding and port triggering. All right, so what's the purpose of port forwarding? Port forwarding actually is used for gaming. So if you got an Xbox, you got a PlayStation, and you want to actually go online, you can actually dedicate a port for your online gaming. Why would you do that? Because all of the traffic for your game would just be dedicated to this port. That would be the only thing that that port is worried about. So it wouldn't be any lag from the port handling anything else. It would only handle the gaming experience. DMZ. So we talked about a DMZ before, and this is where you can actually set it up at. Um, just a quick recap, a DMZ is demilitarized zone, and it's like a safe zone. So if you're dealing with an outside organization and you want them to have access to certain things you can actually set up a DMZ where they can access things there but they can't actually get on your actual network okay last but not least right here is where we can actually set up the router password so if we want to change the router password which we should make sure it's not the default password we could do that right here all right gang so that was a really 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 quick um, overview of setting up your wireless network to make it more secure and to ensure that wireless devices still have access to it. 